So we are going to go and present here, and I am here to explain regarding an instrument, the name is polariscope. A polariscope is an instrument used for experimental stress analysis. And uh, we are going to deal with the practical design perspective of this instrument, that is how to design it within minimum cost. And the objective of the lecture is to make the audience aware of stress analysis and its requirements, to show a real-time mechanism of stress induced by retrogenes and its scientific background, to show a polariscope used for experimental stress analysis designed by us, and it's working under real-time situations. That is, we have designed a polariscope and it's working that we are going to show here. To enable students to design their own polariscope at least possible cost, and to determine experimental stresses induced on an object during dynamic conditions, that is when stress on an object changes rapidly, like a rotating fan or a vibrating machinery, or for the example on the aircraft which is moving, and due to the vibrations induced, stress is induced on its wings. So at the end of this talk, you will be able to design your own polariscope at a cost within $50. So, what is the stress analysis? We so would like to give you a, a basic overview of what it means. The definition of mechanical stress is defined as the internal forces which are acting inside a deformable body. So, why all these forces are coming in the deformable body? There are ample of reasons, like the due to applied external forces. For example, if you are applying some forces on a body, I saw, in fact, some forces get transmitted inside the body and uh, that leads to this internal forces. There are atomic forces like Van der Waal interaction and the other micro atomic interaction forces. The forces generated due to thermal expansion of the body, let us consider a sandwich material. That is, there are two materials which are joined together firmly and rigidly. And uh, let us consider that these two materials have different thermal expansion coefficients. So, under this condition, if the body is heated, then one of the material gets expanded more and the other one less. So there is a new stress inside it, and uh, there are vibrations too, and many more reasons the stresses are generated. And uh, in fact, the consequences of such stress generation are material fatigue, fracture, degradation of material strength. So as we can see that there are a number of ill effects which arise due to this uh, internal stresses. Now, I would like to give a brief overview that what uh, the stress is, what kind of quantity it is. In fact, stress is a tensor quantity. That is, it has a magnitude in multiple directions, that is more than one. Unlike the vector quantity, which is one magnitude in one direction. Now, in engineering stress analysis, usually you deal with two types of stresses. The principal stress and the CS stress. The CS stress can be explained using this diagram. The CS stress, uh, the definition of the CS stress is, uh, the stress component, which is coplanar with the body. As we can see in this figure, that, that the stress component is how it is coplanar with the body, it's called CS stress. And this uh, principal stresses can be defined as the stress acting on the principal axis of the body. So, the, what are this principal axis? This principal axis is defined as the axis at which the magnitude of CS stress is zero. Now, mathematically, how to find this principal stress? As we, we have described earlier, the stress is a tensor quantity. So, it's defined by a matrix called Cauchy's matrix, and the matrix gives stress component in different directions. So, in 3 analysis, we can say that uh, this is the there's a matrix, and if we find the eigenvalues of this matrix, those, uh, those corresponds to the principal stresses, and the eigenvectors give the principal directions. So, this is the mathematical approach. Now, the stress induced by retrogenes is a very significant phenomenon of physics, and uh, how does it govern in design of our instrument? I would like to explain over here. This bireferendians, bireferendians in physics is defined as the property of uh, some materials, very selected materials like calcite, glass, plastics, to exhibit double indices of refraction when stress is present on the material. In other words, a stress bireferendian material shows different refractive indices to a beam of light in different directions. And hence, the light will be subjected to different phase dependence in different directions. The effect in mechanics is known as photoelasticity. The effect of bioreferendians can be fair if polarized light is incident on such materials. If monochromatic polarized light is incident on such materials, then we can see it happen with darkening to bright fringes which are appearing on the body. And in case of white light source, fringes uh, which are colored in nature, as you will see, 
And in fact, as we can see that a number of fringes are being produced over here. So how to extract these stresses uh, which are generated on the body from these fringes? So we have a mathematical equation that is called the stress optic law. Here, as you can see that the induced retardation R is equal to a constant in the thickness of the material and into the difference of the principal stresses. So using this equation we can find the stresses which are induced in the body. Here we have captured one bioreferendance to demonstrate it using our own experimental setup. Now polariscope. What is a polariscope? Polariscope is an instrument for analysis of stress in bioreferendance material. Now if the material is not bioreferendance, for, for example today's metal ceramics, a large number of them are not bioreferendance and we need to do stress analysis on it. So the material is coated with a thin layer of known bioreferendance material. Different types of polariscopes are available in theory as well as in market. In fact, what happens is that uh, each and every uh, kind of polariscope has its own advantage and uh, disadvantage. But the thing is that uh, we have designed over here a gray field polariscope and it's very, very simple to make and it involves less mathematics. So, in fact, this uh, diagram shows the GFPC matter, that is gray field polariscope. As you can see that here is a light source of known wavelength, here is a linear polarizing plate, then a circular polarizing plate, and finally it's uh, inserted in a bioreferential material. And uh, in fact, when the light has been reflected back, here there is a lin uh, linear polarizing plate, which has been uh, rotated at different orientations. In order to capture the images at different orientations and find the stress as per the equations which will be described in the next phase of our presentation. So, in fact, what happens that uh, as you can see that the polariscopes which are available in market, they have a rotating analyzer. So this feature limits the application of dynamic stress analysis. That when the stress on an object changes very rapidly in a short period of time, and it's not possible for us to rotate and orient that uh, analyzer using some mechanical methods. So instead of the rotating pad, we used a beam speaker here and pasted the linear polarizing filters at required orientation. This is a schematic, just uh, the same diagram, but here, as you can see, the chain. Here is a kaleidoscope or a beam speeder or the multi image lens. It can produce four images of a single object. And we have pasted linear polarizers at uh, four different orientations 0, 45, 90, 135 degrees. So now, these were the materials procured and uh, the cost, as you can see, that we can make it a throw a crack. So, in fact, we have this presentation and uh, can see that uh, from where this material is going to you. So, these are designed for our uh, you know, uh, As you can see, that here is a light source, this is the uh, circular, uh, there is a linear polarizer, this is the circular one, and here there is a beam speaker followed by the face, that's the linear polarizing face. So, now, the algorithm development for stress evaluation being concurred with the fact that we have designed a, a real time polariscope, so it's required. Uh, to design an algorithm for stress evaluation from the springs. So, in fact, whenever we are using a graded polariscope, the capture image has the intensity which is defined by this equation. So, what happens if we are putting 0, 45 degree, 90 degree, 135 degree as alpha in this equation, and alpha is the orientation of the, of the polarizer? Uh, as we have captured the images at four different locations 0, 45, 90, 135 degrees. So, we are getting these four equations I1, I2, I3, and I4. And if I solve them, then I can get this delta and beta. But delta is the induced phase retardation, and beta is the orientation of the first principal stress with respect to reference axis. And using the stress optic law, we can find the difference of the principal stresses. This is stress optic law. And as we know that we are using more circles, we can easily, easily find the CS stresses. There is a formula for the CS stresses in the material. Now, in order to evolve the stress optic coefficient, as you can see that in the stress optic law, there is a constant C. This is called stress optic coefficient and it is a constant for uh, definite material. So what happens that in order to evaluate the stress optic coefficient of the material in consideration, we impose a material of known safe to known stress. We impose a disc which was coated with ethylene vinyl acetate. It's a copolymer of ethylene and uh, vinyl acetate. And uh, in fact, uh, from the laws of mechanics, the normal stress of the horizontal uh, diameter of a disc and compared to the schematic and this coated disc. From here, we can find the difference of the stresses. So, theoretically, this is the difference. And uh, if we are finding practically then, uh, from this equation, we can easily relate those two equations to find the value of C, that is the stress of the coefficient, and we found it. So, the images which are obtained using Polaris, as you can see, that there are distinct phases over here. This fringe patterns were processed 
in MATLAB. And finally, if you give the stress map, as you can see that you have stress. Let, uh, time out, time out. No, continue, continue. So the conclusion is a very low positive polarity of so particular and complete stress analysis is thus present. And the design is thus useful for MHS students, researchers, as well as in industrial applications who are keen to pursue experimental and ana stress analysis at minimal cost. So thank you. In case of any design related queries, feel free to contact us. These email addresses.